nice guy. He's a very, very talented actor uh, with, a, uh, with a lovely beard. Yeah, very sexy. Very nice, nice beard. beard. You can yeah. see him in Salem, which is Sundays on WGN America. Take a look at this. Get out. That's, that's exactly like negotiations in late night television. Yeah. You look good, man. I haven't Thank seen you, you for a while. You look sensational. It's been a while. I think really? I've been dressed so much as a Puritan lately, just wearing all black. I think I got a little excited about it. No, you've gone color. completely hipster gay, and I love it. <laughs> but, uh, Jeff, what do you yeah. think? Looking good, man. Looking svelte. I love yeah. Svelte. Yeah, nice. no, it's, it's all yeah. happening. Like Nothing could be less Puritan than what you're wearing, right? Right. Well, some things could be, but this is great. And I, I think mean, that's what the show's about, too. Kind of like when you have this oppression that's on you for a long time, you kind of explode with fabulousness after. I, <laughs> right up here, girl. That's my yeah. word. <laughs> It is not. I'm gonna uncross my legs now. Nah, you're all right. Re relax. It's okay. Okay. You have to undo the bottom button. Have you got the? Do I? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah. have. It's all right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're okay. Okay. Then a few more. Yeah. <laughs> now, so, the, the, tell me about the show. It's a reimagining of the Salem Witch Trials. Yeah. Or? It's we're we're reimagining, recontextualizing what actually happened. And what I love about it is we're kind of playing the game that perhaps the truth isn't accurate to the facts. But what we're saying might actually get closer to what it, what it really felt like to be there during that time. So it's 1690 Salem. It's, it's people that just came to America. And we really try to get into the mind of what it must have been like to, been in, to be involved in that hysteria during that time. Well, th this is a, an unusual bunch of people because they escape from medieval England yeah. because religious practices aren't strict enough. Yeah. I knew we could talk about this. Yeah, no, yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, religious practices in Britain in the Middle Ages were pretty strict. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, they would, like, there's nothing, you, you couldn't do anything. They're coming out of the Inquisition. The right, Ages. yes, yeah. So they were going to a new world where literally anything was possible. But in the anything is possible, there's your belief in the devil. So the devil could exist in those woods. I mean, this was a new world. Like, if, if, you, if you were to think about us going to a new planet now, it's like anything could be on that planet. And right. that's what it must have felt like for them to go over to this new world. Fascinating. To be sandwiched between the ocean and the dark forests and all of that. Well, and here's an interesting thing as well about that time. When to be accused of witchcraft, right, mm -hmm. in that time, was to be guilty, pretty much. You had to prove you were innocent. Yeah, because yeah. the higher court was, was God right. in heaven. Yeah. But doesn't, don't you think that there's, a, there's a, a mob mentality that exists like that now in popular culture? For example, if yeah. I was to say, accuse you of, let's take a a, a heinous crime. Mm -hmm. um, if I was to accuse you of uh, some form of molestation, I think in the in popular culture it would then be your, your obligation. Would you would have to prove you were innocent, yeah. contrary to what the law says. Yeah. And do you think the mob is always like that? Uh, I think so. I think so. I mean, I remember reading once about Twitter, how like an anthropological study on Twitter and why why we're using the internet for social gossip rather than for enlightenment and sharing right. knowledge. And it's kind of it goes back to our caveman roots, where sharing little bits of information with each other, like you know, making a comment about where the food supply was, or or commenting on the leader if he's doing a good job or not. That's why people kind of become obsessed with that act. And the internet is just an extension of those primitive instincts. Yeah, but at the same time, you get stuff like the, the people who spend uh, all day on Facebook or Twitter or whatever the, the site is with yeah. their own little famous world. I'm, I'm famous in this world. Here's what I've done. I yeah. had lunch. I, I, you know, groomed my cat. I did all these. Is that what you do? On, That's on what I do, <laughs> obviously. You know, I, I have lunch, I groom my cat, and I take a nap. But. Uh, <laughs> But I think that I think it might lead to a particularly uh, tricky form of narcissism, which didn't yeah. exist before. Yeah, I mean, everyone's all about the selfies now. Right, right. And which I which know seems... I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, selfie, it seems selfish, you know. Like, why don't we do? I don't know what the word would be for taking pictures of other people than yourself. Yeah, just just but... pictures. Yeah, just pictures. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, just a, a picture is is fine. <laughs> No, but it is an interesting thing. Yeah. Do you, so do you find it? Are you on the Tweety Box? Uh, I've been doing the Tweety Box. Yeah? Yeah. I'm yeah. a tweeter from time to time. And do you, do you, where do you get your news from? 
Uh, I, I go on uh, Huffington Post. A lot of times, interestingly, you'll find that uh, Twitter is actually a good place for news. There was a little unverified bit of Unverified reports. Unverified. Yeah. Right, right. But if you feel a little bit of an earthquake or something, I, I felt one in LA and I was like, was that an earthquake? And none of the news sites had that information. But on Twitter, everyone's like, what the? Was that an earthquake? And then you realize I'm not alone. <laughs> I think that's unverified reports. Uh, no, you can, there's a little app you can get now for earthquakes. The USGS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you just, you know, you go, was that an earthquake? Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. validated because my phone told me uh -huh. uh, that it was an earthquake. <laughs> so my house falling down doesn't, you know, do it, but I've got an app that told me it actually yeah. happened. And it, it vibrates whenever there's an earthquake. Right. Yeah. And so does everything else, obviously, of course. Exactly. I, <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting thing, though. I find myself fascinated by it recently. I've, I've been the subject of some internet speculation recently, and I find it shocking mm -hmm. people just make make stuff up yeah and then and then r reputable news sites um take it and they say sources are saying yeah. or rumors they're, they're are they're going on twitter and then boom that's it that it becomes a story jack 239 yeah, right this yeah. is my source this is the uh, yeah. rumors are saying the scuttlebutt is they put in any of that stuff uh -huh. and then just print any old crap yeah has it ever happened about you in your life uh a little bit not really uh i can't think of a specific have thing. you ever uh, printed a rumor about anyone on the All internet the time. yeah i think you know what i did once actually there is an industry site called deadline hollywood you've yes. probably seen that yeah, yeah, of course. And there is a comment section, and you can post things anonymously. So when it came, there was some Salem stuff, and I was like, that Salem show is really great. <laughs> <laughs> I did that voice as I typed yeah, it. Yeah, that's good. Because <laughs> people reading it, they go, boy, this is going to appeal to me. <laughs> as just, I got to tune in and watch yeah, that show. Yeah, sure, I got to watch this guy. <laughs> See? I like to wear blue suits, too. <laughs> no, the thing is, though, now you've copped to, uh, you know, Commenting on yourself on deadline, that's it. You, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. I'm blacklisted now. No, you won't be blacklisted. Yeah. Blue listed. Blue listed. <laughs> no, it'll be fine. Okay. Do you follow the basketball at all? I love the basketball. Ah, which no. team do you. Uh, uh, I love favor? because I love Greg Popovich. I love the Spurs. Uh -huh. uh, I love all teams. I really love players. Uh -huh. Like, Kevin what about Durant. guys who own uh, basketball teams? Anybody? Uh, <laughs> There are a lot of those that I like. Yeah. There's this one guy that I don't like so much, though. Yeah. Yeah. It seems an odd business. You know? It's appalling. It's really appalling. Yeah. I loved what Charles Barkley said on uh, Inside the NBA the other night. He, uh, he was brought up this Martin Luther King quote where he said, an injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. And I thought, I'm glad that people are focusing on this and paying attention to it because... I mean, we need to be aware that this is happening a lot, even when it's happening oh, behind sure. closed yeah, doors. Yeah, it's epidemic, epidemic. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's unacceptable. Yes. It's completely unacceptable. It, it must be unacceptable in private as well as public. Exactly. No, I think sometimes people... Especially with your... Yes, absolutely. Girlfriend. Unacceptable. Yeah. Unacceptable. Yeah. You know, and I, and I think that, you know, sometimes I've heard people say, well, you know, the First Amendment, people should uh, be able to say what they want. And yeah, absolutely, they should yeah. be able to say what you want. But the NBA doesn't have to say, well, you can be part of our gang. They can yeah. say... Get out, you know, because yeah. they, you know... We have a right to tell him we don't like what he's saying. Right, yeah. that's, I, it's always the argument I have with some comedians that they say, you know, I say, that's a terrible joke, and they go, you're oppressing me, it's my right to tell that joke, and I go, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's my right to tell you you're a Crikey. douchebag, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a terrible joke. Yeah. Um, and then you have the right to bear arms, so you can go in the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, and then, <laughs> and then it escalates, and then somebody shouts, what, and then burn him, I say, and then everybody goes crazy. <laughs> well, we're out of time. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Awkward pause? Is that the way to do it, you think? Uh, Is that or, how we go out? Yeah, or, or we could have a little meditation. You want a meditation? Yeah. I, you know what? I want to know about your tattoo because we're talking about America, pre-colonial America, all that. Yeah, this stuff. is pre. Well, this is colonial America. This yeah. is uh, this is 1754 in the Pennsylvania Gazette. You got that done in 1754? Yeah, 1754. Uh. Benjamin Franklin did this himself. Uh, yeah. He was pretty toasted. Uh, well, we, now, what is this we all you? were, except for Adams. What a bore, man. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, everyone was kind of like, you know, and I was like, ah, and I was like, ah. <laughs> and then they all formed a country. And, and Samuel I, and Adams, the beer guy, didn't drink. No, no, he didn't. I just like to taste the beer. I just tasted it, that's <laughs> it, then spit it out. Yeah. I did like what that guy said on Deadline <laughs> Hollywood, though. He was great. Dead on. Yeah, yeah, all right, well. Uh, all right, so we meditate. Meditate and then okay. help you. Okay. All right.